Alrighty, welcome back everyone, it's Garland here, I'm bringing you a new Neverwinter video. And today we're going to be going over the Mount Caller. So this is a new item that was implemented into the game with the new Mount System. So if you're unfamiliar with the new implementation of the Mount System, uh, be sure to check out that video. Uh, we put it out recently and I went over all of the Mythic Mounts and the Mount Guide and how to obtain Mythic Mounts, etc. And that whole process. So... As of filming this video for a reference point, today is currently September 18th of 2020. So if you're watching this video down the road, there is probably going to be tweaks done to the system. Uh, it was implemented. There was no testing done. It went to the live servers on all three platforms. They didn't do any uh, community feedback, no testing, etc. So there's ultimately going to probably be adjustments made to the caller system throughout the time uh so if you're watching this you know months down the road some of this information might be invalid because systems were changed but right now as it was implemented into the game we are going to go over everything we're going to look at it i'm going to show you guys uh the upgrades and where to get stuff etc etc so without further ado let's go ahead and jump right in Alrighty. so first on the list let's go ahead and discuss how do you get callers uh, currently there's two methods. Uh, one of course is the easy route and that's to navigate over to the Zen store, go over to the supplies and Epic Mount callers are currently listed. Now these do have a price tag of 1000 AKA $10 per caller. Uh, and currently it's 20% off. So the Mount callers, you can buy Epic right off the bat. Uh, and that's up to the individual player if you want to spend the money, uh, whether it be real life currency or if you're trying to use the ADX. Now what we do not know is if this is permanent. We don't know if these epic mount callers are going to always be in the Zen store, if this is a permanent feature, or if they're actually going to end up removing the epic mount callers from the Zen store. We just do not know and we'll have to wait and see. So where do you get base callers from? So if you go ahead and look at the auction house, go to the mount section and go down to uh, your mount callers, go ahead and search, and you can see that there are white callers available. Now these do not have any statistics, these are considered the base caller. So there is a tier system, you have white callers that go into green callers, that go into blue callers, that go into epic callers, which are the purple, then legendary callers, and then finally mythic callers. So you have the white ones here listed, you have blue ones, or I'm sorry, green, uh, and there's one blue one listed on Xbox. So where do we get these? Well, they come out of dungeons. Uh, so the base versions seem to be dropping uh, anywhere for the most part. We don't have 100% confirmation on drop rates. Uh, we've seen people pull these uh, fairly easy. We've seen people do a hundred dungeon runs and not seen one single caller yet. So it seems that the harder the content, the color goes up. So if you're doing low level content, such as like, uh, skirmishes like master of the hunt and dread legion, for instance, it seems like these white collars are dropping out of those. Uh, now I've had unconfirmed rumors that epic callers are actually dropping out of the hardest content, such as Tower of the Mad Mage, for instance. Now, I cannot confirm or deny that. That was only rumors. But we can clearly see that green callers are dropping out of dungeons. They are for sale on the auction house. We can clearly see that blue callers are actually dropping out of dungeons. They are being sold on the auction house. Now, we don't know if there's any specific dungeons that drop certain tiers. Uh, none of that information is available right now. The best way I could tell you is that just farm dungeons and see ultimately what your RNG is going to ultimately be. So what is the best logical decision? Uh, are you going to go and farm dungeons and try to get free epic callers? Or are you gonna use the ADX and just buy epic callers right off the bat? That's up to you. I, I can't tell you what to do as a player. So let's go ahead and look at these callers, and we're going to uh, discuss that. So the Epic Mount Caller Choice Pack, for instance, right? You open one of these bad boys up. Currently in the game, 
there are 15 different callers. You can scroll down. There are 15 different callers. Now, the confusion is, is that there are only five different types of callers. So there is three of each type for a total of 15. Five times three is obviously 15. So practical is one category. Sturdy is one category. Supportive is one category. Unified is one category. And wayfaring is one category. So there is five total categories. Now, why is this important? Well, because you can only equip one caller out of each category. For instance, I have one sturdy. I have one wayfaring. I have one unified. And I have one practical. So I'm missing the supportive, right? You can't have two sturdy callers on. You can't have two wayfaring callers on, etc. You can only have one caller out of each category. And remember, there are only five categories. Now, why is this important? Well, because you need to look at the callers and decide what callers you actually want. So, for instance, if we look at the practical, glory gain, gold bonus, and rough AD bonus. So you can only have one of these equipped at a time, and you as a player need to decide which one you want. So do you want glory gain? Do you want gold bonus? Or do you want rough AD? Most people are probably going to go with the rough AD. So let's continue. Let's look at the sturdy category. This is a big one. At will powers do 3% 3, 3 more damage. And counter powers do 3% more damage. Or daily powers do do 3% more damage. So depending on what class you're playing, if you play a Barbarian, for instance, a lot of your damage comes from your at-will powers, you're more unlikely going to want this sturdy barbed caller for the 3% at-will damage rather than the encounter damage, right? So if you play a Warlock or a Wizard or something that is very uh, high on encounter damage, then you're probably going to want the encounter damage over the at-will. So I know there was a lot of confusion because certain people are asking me, well, why can't I equip my sturdy barbed and my sturdy, my sturdy crescent? It's because you can only have one out of each category. So moving on, if we look at the supportive category, we have control bonus, we have stamina gain, and you have outgoing healing. So now if you're a healer, you're going to take the outgoing healing, right? Let's look at the unified category. We have control resistance, we have movement speed, and we have incoming healing. So most people are going to flip-flop and say, well, do I want more movement speed or do I want more incoming healing? More than likely, you're going to take un incoming healing. If we look at the next category, which is the wayfaring, we have critical severity, we have recharge speed, and we have AP gain. So now again, you have to decide, based upon what class you're playing, which bonus do you want. Crit severity is most likely going to be taken by most DPS classes, whereas tanks and healers might want that additional action point gain. Right? So now we have the understanding of how all of these work. So that should clear up any confusion with the caller system. One more thing we need to go over is the callers being equipped. So you can see that I have an epic caller here, and it's a mythic mount. Now, if I were to upgrade this caller here to mythic quality, the mount also has to coincide. So you can't have a mythic uh, caller equipped on an epic mount. So if this was a legendary caller, I couldn't equip it unless this was a legendary mount. So if you have all mythics here, if you have all mythic mounts, then you could have all mythic callers. Uh, the same thing with legendary. If you had all mythic mounts here, then you can equip... If you have mythic mounts, you can equip any type of caller. It doesn't matter. But you, you have to match them up. So if you had all legendaries, uh, legendary callers, I would have to change all these mounts in my stable to legendary mounts. Which also means I would have to redo my whole insignia system. Depending on what legendary mounts you upgraded in your stable, now your insignias 
are all going to be messed up and you're going to have to go through your insignias depending on what legendary mounts you upgraded. So hopefully that solves the confusion with, I know some people were saying, well, I have a legendary caller, but I can't equip it. Well, it's because you're trying to equip it on an epic mount. So the mount has to be higher than the caller. If you have mythic mounts, you can equip any type of caller. It doesn't matter on the color or the tier. Next, we're going to talk about the upgrading system. So let's go ahead and jump into that. All right, so moving along to upgrading. So if we go here, you can see that it says manage your stable caller. So if we hit X on that, go to refine, it will bring up the reagents that you need to refine. So these are the new items in the game, the shards of empowerment. These drop from pretty much just any trash mob in the game that I've seen so far. You could just go kill trash mobs and these actually drop uh, fairly often. They have a pretty good drop ratio. Now these legendary shards, the shard of greater empowerment, these seem to be dropping out of dungeon chests only for harder content. So we're talking about Infernal Citadel, we're talking about Tower of the Mad Mage, we're talking about Zariel, we're talking about like Cradle of the Death Guard. Uh, the harder the content, we're seeing these drop. Now these have a very low drop chance as well. So if we look at my inventory, for instance, I haven't gotten any of these uh, shards of greater empowerment. These were free out of the free mount pack. These I've accumulated so far up until this point in the game. 68 uh, shard of empowerment I farmed manually. I have not gotten any of the legendary shards out of dungeons yet. So right now I'm going to bring up on the screen... Uh, an upgraded chart that will dive into depth about the upgrading system. Alright, so let's look at the overall reagent values here across the board. So right now on your screen, uh, I brought up a chart and let's talk about this. Because the reagents right now in the current system cost way too much to upgrade. And as it sits right now, I would advise everyone to leave your callers at Epic until cryptic either makes adjustments or gives us 100 uh, percent confirmation that they're not going to change anything in the current system so this is again as of filming this video today is september 18th these are the amount of reagents that you're actually going to need so if we look at the base collar which again is the white collars uh if you go to the auction house and or if you if you get one out of a dungeon all right so if you get one of these white collars, this is considered the base collar. To upgrade that, you need 10,000 refinement points. You need 10 insignia powder. You need 10 of the epic shards. You need uh, marks of potency times 5, rank 3. And it has a 100% upgrade percent. So now if we move on to the green one, now all of that... Uh, increases. Now you need 50,000 refinement points. You need 50 insignia powder. You need 50 epic shards. You need rank 4 potencies now. And now it has only a 50% upgrade chance. These aren't guaranteed upgrades, guys. So you have to, again, now you're going to be using preservation wars at this point. So now let's look at the blue. The blue going into epic. Now you're going to need 100,000 refinement points, 250 insignia powder, 100 of the epic shards. Uh, now you need rank 5 potencies times 5, and now you only have a 20% chance. So now how many preservation wards are you going to have to use? It has a guaranteed upgrade on it of 10. So you're going to at least, at least use 10 preservation wards at the minimum. So now let's, let's look at the epics. The, the epics, now this is where it starts getting uh, a little bit expensive here. So, epics. Uh, you're going to need 150,000 refinement points. You need 750 insignia powder. You need 150 of the epic shards. Now you also need those greater shards. So you need 50 legendary shards. Now you also need rank 6 potencies, which aren't cheap. You need five of those, and now you only have a 5% success chance. 
and that goes up to 40. You can see on your screen, I have it highlighted here at zero out of 40 before you get a guaranteed upgrade. So you're going to use at the minimum uh, 40, or I'm sorry, at the maximum of 40 preservation wards. This is why I'm telling you to leave your callers at Epic right now. So now, here's the big boy. So now you have a legendary caller. You went through that whole process, and you actually have legendary callers. So now you want mythic callers. Well, it's going to cost you a lot of money. To get a mythic caller, you're going to need 200 refinement points, 3,750 insignia powder, which is insane. You're going to need 200 of the epic shards, you're going to need 100 of the greater shards, and now you need rank 7 marks of potency times 5, and this drops down to a 1% ratio success rate with a maximum of 200 preservation wards. That's to get a mythic caller. Now why is this bad and why am I kind of upset by this process? is because the statistical gain you are gaining is 1%, guys. So so what does that mean? You're gaining 2% overall. For all of those resources that you're going to use, if we look at the caller here, uh, an epic caller is 3%. And counter powers do 3% more. If you go to legendary, it goes up by 1%. And then again, if you take this to Mythic, it goes up 1%. So for the amount of reagents that it's going to cost you, right now in the current system, it doesn't make sense. For a 2% gain, you're, you're looking at a good 10 million, 15 million AD. Alright? Is 2% and counter power damage worth 10 million AD? No. No, it is not. So this system right now ultimately is going to need some improvements done to it and adjustments. And I might have to make a video, another video on the callers down the road with an upgraded system. However, Cryptic could just say, yeah, we're leaving it the way it is. So my advice to everyone out there is just don't upgrade your callers. Uh, the 2% gain doesn't justify the amount of reagents that you're going to waste upgrading these things right now. Um, going from 3% encounter damage to 5% encounter damage, you're not going to see a significant boost in DPS, so it just doesn't make logical sense. So my advice every, to everyone out there is just strive to get epic callers at the minimum. And then after that... If the system adjusts itself and we're seeing better ratios, better cost ratios, and then it makes logical sense to upgrade these, then we can go ahead and do that. Alright, there we go guys. That's everything you should need to know about the new system, the new items in play, the mount caller system. Uh, again, my own personal opinions are they do need some tweaks and adjustments. So... It is what it is. Leave me comments below. Let me know your feelings on the caller system. Uh, hopefully we can progress this forward. Hopefully it does get some adjustments. And uh, let me know in the comments your overall opinions. Uh, make sure to smash that thumbs up button. It really helps the YouTube algorithm. And hopefully you enjoyed this video. That's all I got for you today. Hopefully you shouldn't have any more questions regarding uh, callers. If you do, just leave a comment below and I'll uh, try to answer it for you. So... Uh, that's all I got for you, and I'll see you guys real soon.